What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aaron, this is Aaron's Aquatics, and today we are going to be talking about Montipore eating nudibranx as well as a second quarantine system. Let's get to it. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and start off with the quarantine system. As many of you know, and as of my last update, because of the ick outbreak in the 250 gallon saltwater tank, all of my fish are now inside the, uh, this is a 30 gallon quarantine system. We've got the Midas Blenny, Coral Beauty, Flame Angel, Ocellaris, uh, Snowflake, and Wyoming White, or Tanya. I haven't named any of the other fish. Um, they are out and about because they are ready for some food. I'll be feeding them here shortly. Now that's not the reason why we are here today. This quarantine is set up specifically to get these guys healthy, to keep them out of the tank for a full 76 day fallow period. What I want to talk to you about today is the second quarantine tank that I set up over the weekend. Before we talk about the why we have a second quarantine tank, I want to talk about what's inside this tank because this build is a little bit different than my normal quarantine method. Now what is the same is my double sponge filter exact same one that's on the other quarantine tank. This sponge filter has been sitting inside my display tank sump for some months now. Um, getting all that beneficial bacteria should instantly cycle this tank. Now that's kind of where that thought begins and where an issue starts as well. So right here is my Seachem uh, ammonia badge. Uh, right now it's reading as safe levels. I put it in last night. At this point, I think it would be calibrated. However, I did run a Red Sea ammonia test and it was reading 0.2 uh, ppm, I believe, which is still high for ammonia. So this is definitely not a safe tank just yet. I need to figure out the discrepancy between the ammonia badge and the Red Sea test. Um, so I'll be doing a test here shortly. As for the other equipment, we have two, I believe these are Sun Sun Powerheads. They are spares that I got at a really cheap deal. I got both of them for like nine bucks. It's the exact same ones that are on that tank. These things put up quite a bit of surface, surface agitation, get a lot of oxygen in the system, especially when you guys are gonna be dosing medications like Prozzi Pro. So besides the heater, uh, smattering of PVC, the only major difference here besides my normal tank is the lid. So I have two levels here. I've got some egg crate material, which I cut to size, actually a little bit, almost too small. Um, and a uh, some of this, um, I don't know what you call it. It's basically a light diffuser. Um, it's this little plastic material. Not sure how much I like it because during the day, when the heat from the tank and moisture touches it, it starts to curl. And you can kind of see that right there. Um, and I have to flip it over or I have to put something heavy down to stop it from curling on both sides. So that is the setup of my second quarantine tank. The question of why I have a second quarantine tank is, why, why is this even a question? Everyone knows why. We have 76 days on a fallow period of this tank, okay? I have one quarantine tank out of necessity. What I wanna do is I wanna put fish in the second quarantine that I've been wanting to have in my tank now so that once the tank is ready to go, we should be good at putting all of these fish in the tank at the same time. I've been constantly feeding my display tank, which means that hopefully the bacteria will be able to process um, that much bio load at the same time. It's a big tank, these are all really small fish, shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, so we've already talked about the second quarantine setup. What I wanna talk about now are the Monty eating nudibranchs. Montipora eating nudibranch are a type of eolid nudibranch which are known to feed on coral. These pests almost exclusively feed on the tissue of corals from the Montipora and Anacropora genus. With the ability to multiply faster than a zerg hive, they can inflict large amounts of damage and destroy large corals in a very short amount of time. About a week and a half ago, I noticed something strange on my encrusting Montipora. As you can see from this video, the first thing I noticed were these nudibranch looking 
creating pests on my coral. Now, I have never had experience with Nudibranx before. I have browsed pest and disease forums, so I had a good idea of what they look like. After getting a positive identification, my first question was, well, what do I have to do? How do I get these guys out of my tank? There is nothing worse than Montipora eating Nudibranx, guys. Even Than over at Tidal Gardens in his top five pest videos included Montipora eating Nudibranx as his number one pest. And he works on the wholesale side of the reefing hobby, which gives him some very unique experience. That being said, with the help of a few users on a reef to reef thread that I posted, I created a solid plan of attack to deal with these pests. As of one and a half weeks ago, I have been following a strict regiment of pulling out every single one of my Montipora, dipping them in Coral RX and Bayer Advanced Insect Killer, brushing every single one with a toothbrush on the edges to try to get rid of the eggs, and visually inspect them for these little buggers. Now, I do this entire process every three days and I'm gonna be doing this for the next two to three weeks. So you guys have to understand that Montipora eating nudibranx, uh, they, they reproduce asexually. So they only need one to reproduce. Each time they reproduce, they lay about 100 eggs at a time and the eggs hatch within 36 to 96 hours. That is why we follow this regimen every three days. We wanna kill these nudibranx babies just as they hatch or just about when they hatch before they're able to lay a clutch of eggs themselves. So far, my results have been positive. On my very first initial dose, this is before I started my scheduled regimen, um, I saw about 10 to 12 individual nudibranchs. Some of them were adults, some of them were babies. To me, this was already a good sign because in other users' experience, they noticed hundreds of nudibranchs before they actually were able to treat the issue. After three days from my first initial dip, I only had one nudibranch come off the coral during my dipping process. Over the last two cycled regiments, I have noticed zero nudibranchs come off my coral. I am still going to continue for at least the next week, two weeks, depending on how I feel, my process of dipping and scrubbing each of these Montipora every three days. We're going to knock this one out, guys. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. In the coming weeks, I will be giving you updates on the Montipora eating nudibranch plague, as well as the tank inhabitants for the second quarantine. But before I leave, I wanted to ask you guys a quick question. I wanted to kind of gauge what my subscribers have at home. Those of you with saltwater or even freshwater tanks, what size tank do you have at home and how many tanks do you have? I know there's some of you out there who are pushing the lines with your parents, with your family, with too many damn tanks. There's no such thing. Shh, shh. Too many damn tanks. Too many. People have too many sometimes. All right, guys, I will catch you in the next video. My name is Aaron. This is Aaron's Aquatics. I'll see you next time.